So let's start with thick skin, and it's a deceptively simple concept, uh, or actually, it's actually pretty simple. There's not, it's not really a complex concept, uh, but when you start adding it with other ZBrush functionality, I think you'll get some really cool effects, and you're probably going to figure out stuff that I haven't even thought of yet. So just to keep it at its basics, let's go ahead and go into the simple brush, or the tool palette, I should say, and we're just going to grab a Sphere 3D, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode, and then hit make poly mesh 3D. So now we have sculptable geometry here. Uh, just so we can get a little bit more resolution out of this, let's go in here to Geometry, Dynamesh, and if I turn on Polyframe over here, or Shift F, you're going to see when I uh, turn Blur down to zero and then just hit the Dynamesh button, I'm going to get a little bit more geometry, and if you want even more resolution, just take the slider and crank it up to the right, and then Control drag in your document. If that doesn't do anything, just tap your mesh a little bit, and then Control drag and it'll update that mesh. Um, in fact, you can also hit X to go across X symmetry, which is underneath the transform menu here. Again, just tap X to go into X symmetry. So thick skin, what does it do? Well, first you need to know where it is, and that's going to be under here. So you have your tool menu docked by default over here on the side. Just grab this little gray area, pull down, and then go in here to the thick skin menu. Uh, it's pretty simple. You have a thick skin button and a thick skin slider. Uh, with this turned on, that enables thick skin and the thick skin slider kind of d d tells it how thick that skin is going to be. If you turn it all the way to the left, it's going to go to a very small amount, basically zero. And then as I crank it up, you're going to see your objects gets bigger. Now, this is just a preview. So again, if I either move this slider up and stop moving it, or when it turns red, if you just tap that number over here, you can type in, say, 20, which is the default. And you're also going to see up above here, I'm going to hit Shift M so I can bring up the magnifying glass. You're going to see there's a little bar above that a main thickness slider bar. That's going to give you more fine-tuned movements. So if you grab this top one here, you're going to see as I move this around, it gives me much, much more finer control with greater mouse movement. But anyway, we'll set this back to 20, and then let's just start brushing on our mesh. So you're going to see as I start brushing on my mesh, uh, just using the standard brush. So using my standard brush, I'm going to brush out. I'm going to let go and brush out again. I'm eventually going to hit a cap. That cap is exactly that thickness that we added previously. So when you're dragging that slider around and getting that preview, when I set it to 20, it's going to stop my brush at 20 units out from my mesh. So the more I use my standard brush, the more it's just going to stop right there. So that's going to limit the effects of your brush on this mesh. And in fact, if I hold down Alt, so by default, Z or standard is Z add. If I hold down Alt, that's going to turn it to Z sub. And you're going to see it's going to do the exact same thing uh, inwards. Now let's say we want a little bit more resolution. We've already talked about cranking up our Dynamesh resolution, or you could go up here to Geometry Divide. Either one of these, if I hit Divide, you're going to see thick skin grays out the thickness. If I Control Z to undo that, and I take this Dynamesh and I just Control Drag, it's going to disable that thick skin. Essentially, what thick skin is doing is storing those vert positions that exist, allows the brush to manipulate those vert positions based on the stored vert positions uh, up to a minimum and maximum depth, holding down alt, or height, uh, just brushing out as usual. So now you're going to see, since I've re dynamesh this, I don't have thick skin anymore. So now my standard brush is just going to behave like normal. I can just keep brushing over and over and over again. And it's just going to, you know, it's not going to ever hit that cap. If I turn on thick skin again, now my standard brush will hit that cap. However, these have also been stored. So instead of me brushing over this now and hitting that cap immediately, you're going to see I can now brush up an extra 20 on top of what was previously there. So let's take our undo slider here. We'll just slide this all the way back to where we uh, just started here. And let's talk about that a little bit more. So uh, let's turn off our thick skin. This is our default sphere here. So if we just go and start sculpting on it, it just behaves as normal. There's no capping or limiting the effects of the brush. If I turn on thick skin, now we're capping it at 20 positive and 20 negative. And again, if you want to see that represented here, you can see it's, it's going out and coming back in. So again, set up to 20. And now if I go over here and start sculpting this out, it's going to cap. If I hold down Alt and start sculpting in, it's going to cap. And as long as I don't change the verts by dynameshing or using Z modeler and adding an edge loop or adding a subdivision, it's always going to store that vert position and allow me to change that thickness on the fly and update these. So at any point, I can go back in here. As long as it's still at 20, I can just keep sculpting and all of this will still be at 20. I can go over here, negative 20, negative 20 across here, 20 across here, and it's always going to cap. So Users who have used ZBrush for a while may notice that this seems a little bit like the layer brush. However, you're not limited to using the layer brush and also storing a morph target. We'll get a little bit of that later. This is kind of a refresher. You can literally use any brush. So if you go in here to say B, C, B for our clay buildup brush, um, it's still going to be the clay buildup brush until you hit that 20 cap. 
and then it's going to cap out. Same thing if you go in here. So let's go back to our standard brush here. That's a BSJ, it looks like. And what I demonstrated, you know, we haven't changed the vert order. So we're going to go through here and we're always going to stay at 20 or negative 20, depending if I'm hitting, uh, holding down Alt or letting go of Alt with my standard brush here. However, if I now go over here and I click and drag this up a little bit, so I'm increasing that thickness. Now when I use my brush, it'll be the regular standard brush until it hits that new cap. So now I can go through here and I can make this a little bit wider or I can hold down Alt and I can dig in even deeper because now it's set to 31 instead of 20. So now you're gonna see this was originally dug in at 20. Now we're digging in at 30. If you wanna go even smaller, just drag this to the left. Now we're gonna set this to maybe six. So instead of 20, now it's at six and you're gonna see it's going to start eating away at what was originally 20 and 30. In fact, and I hold, hold down Alt, and you also go down negative six, obviously. Um, in fact, if you take this all the way down to zero and start brushing over this, that's going to, let's go ahead and tap L, uh, which is gonna turn off underneath stroke. Lazy mouse, if you tap L, it's gonna turn that on or off. Uh, if we turn that off and just brush over this, you're gonna see it's gonna get rid of all of those vert position changes that we made on our model. And then if you want to go back in there and use thick skin again, just pull this up to tell it, you know, where to limit my brush influence and then go back in here and you're right back where you started. And remember, this works with any brushes and we're going to be getting in, uh, deeper into other brush settings uh, that'll take advantage of this in very interesting ways. But one really easy one is just going to our move brush. So BMV. And by default, your move brush, we turn off thick skin. Uh, you're just, you're gonna move out uh, certain sections of your mesh. And in fact, if you hold down Alt, when you use your move brush, it's gonna pull along those surface normals. So if every single face that makes up this object had a little string poking right out of the middle of it, away from the object, that's called the surface normal. And uh, again, by holding down Alt with the move brush, it's gonna pull out along those surface normals. And again, you're to have no limits until you, your brush hits the end of the uh, ZBrush uh, window, or your monitor, I should say. And then uh, if you go inwards, uh, it's gonna go inwards as well. However, as soon as you go over here and turn on thick skin, you can hold down Alt and it'll cap it in or out. Now, you don't have to set it to low numbers. You know, we would be messing around with like 19 and 30 and six and stuff. You can crank this all the way up to like 275 or 300. Uh, and then if I hold down Alt, you see it's gonna go all the way out until eventually, boom, finally it hits that cap. Same thing inwards, boom, it'll finally hit that cap somewhere in there, there it is. So you can give yourself plenty of leeway. Again, if we go back to clay buildup, just go through here and start brushing, you can actually set it to such a high number that eventually, I mean, it's gonna take you a while to reach that. So that's gonna come in handy when we talk about rock creation later on, where you can kind of use this to kind of create cliff faces, but still utilize a uh, thick skin for that. And that's it, that's the basics of thick skin. And if you don't wanna go any deeper and that's all the information you need to know, feel free to stop the video here or don't go to the next one if we decide to split this up. That's the basics of thick skin. You're basically limiting the influence of your brushes or however you choose to manipulate these vertices based on this number right here. So now that we've got the basics under control and everybody that's still here wants to have a little bit deeper, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna drag that, again, that undo slider all the way back here. So we just had our usual Dynamesh 2216 resolution Dynamesh sphere here with X symmetry turned on. Now let's go ahead and turn thick skin off temporarily. And I mentioned a few things that you can use uh, that have similar effects to thick skin. And in fact, you can use them in conjunction with thick skin uh, just fine. So one of those is layers. And this is gonna demonstrate that you can't really change the vert order uh, of your object uh, without it kind of breaking. So for instance, if we go in here and we click this new button, we, are make, we just made a new layer here. So I can go through here and I can record uh, me doing so this layer again if you hold down alt on the move brush it'll pull along the surface normal or pull out from the surface normal we don't have thick skin turned on so it's not going to cap that influence and if we're done we can just go ahead and turn off that record button and then we can go down here and we can dial this in or out and all it's doing is doing a linear interpolation or moving the original vert position in a straight line to the new vert position at the very end and if you want to you can actually over crank that effect or under crank that effect if you want to but at its base, at its core, that's what it's doing. Now, if I go through here again, we have Dynamesh turned on. And anytime you manipulate your mesh and you control drag and re Dynamesh an object, it's going to want to change those verts that you have. It's going to want to re Dynamesh this. And in fact, if you look up here, it says this, well, it said, uh, look up there on the left, this mesh has layers, action canceled. It's not going to let me uh, re Dynamesh this because I have layers. And it knows that if it changes those vert orders, this layer isn't gonna work anymore because again, it has to have an original vert position and a new vert position in order to work. So if again, I try to go in here with Z modeler and add an edge loop or try to re-dynamesh, 
it's gonna break that functionality. It needs an original position and a new position in order for that to work. Same, same thing with thick skin. So you can go ahead and turn that back to zero. We'll go ahead and hit bake all or delete. That'll get rid of that layer for all intents and purposes. And now let's open up morph target. So morph target is another one of those. So you can say store a morph target and it's gonna store those vert positions. And then again, I'm just gonna grab my move brush, hold down alt, and I'm gonna push away, pull away, and then pull in. And just like the layers, I can use this morph here. I can morph it back to its original position. Again, just changing the original vert position, which is here, to the new vert positions that I made. Or I can over crank uh, the differences that I made if I go to the left. Now, the interesting thing about morph targets is I can go in here to my morph brush, BMO, and use this to sculpt back in to my original morph position. So I can go through here and use my morph brush to kind of morph this back to its original position. Or if I undo that, I can go in here to morph target switch, and that's going to take those original vert positions, make those the main verts that you see, and then BMO for the morph brush. And now you can morph in the new vert positions that you had in there. So we're just gonna brush those right back out. But again, if we undo that, so we're back to our original sphere here. We'll say delete morph target. Let's store a morph target. Let's do that again. Hold down alt, kind of push in some, and you don't have to do that. You can just use move brush or whatever brush you want to use to manipulate your surface. And then again, if we, we've changed our verts and we control drag, it changed our verts, that morph target's gone. You're going to see we still have it stored in memory, but all this stuff is grayed out because we can no longer switch or store or morph drag to those other vert positions because we've created new verts on our object. It doesn't know what to do with them. These new verts don't have an original position. They're brand new geometry. So at this point, you might as well delete your morph target because it's not doing you much good. Let's go ahead and turn off polyframe here. And so hopefully that makes the limitations of thick skin mean a little bit more now that you've kind of dived a little bit deeper into, you know, kind of storing and manipulating vert positions and moving between them basically. So again, we've dived a little bit deeper into the thick skin functionality. I'm gonna go one further. And again, if you just wanna know about thick skin, go ahead and uh, skip this part. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna throw in something else you can use that doesn't rely on vert order, just in case you need to get some information back or get rid of any information. So what we can do is we can go in here and we can start sculpting out, you know, let's just sculpting out a face or something like that. Just using our clay buildup brush here. And hold down Alt again if you want to push in is basic brush functionality. Speaking of, if you're brand new to ZBrush and you're starting at this video for some reason, uh, if you go to my ArtStation page or my ArtStation page or my YouTube channel, you're going to see a new intro to ZBrush, ZBrush for ideation on both of these. You can go in here, and you're going to see there's 56 videos that get you caught up on like the very very basics of ZBrush. One of those things being just basic brush, brush functionality here. So again, you're sculpting a face here, or whatever this happens to be. And again, if we store a thick skin, we have thickness set at zero, but that's not gonna brush us back because as soon as we hit that thick skin button, it's taking these current vert positions and saying, okay, we want a thick skin and it's not gonna allow me to do anything because it's set to zero essentially. Now, however, as soon as we crank this up, now we can go up five or 90 and eventually it'll cap out or 20. So let's say, you know what? I wish I could brush back in my original sphere in some of these places. Well, we didn't store a morph target, so we can't, you know, if you would have stored a morph target when you first started, you could do that. However, you'd have to be really careful because if you control dragged and redynameshed, that morph target is going to be invalid. You could do it on a layer, but you're still going to have that same limitation. However, there's another option in here. This is a ZBrush 2020 what's new feature. Let's do a search for history here. Here's history recall. And again, if you just go through here on my YouTube channel, type in history, you're gonna see all the history recall brush we're about to go over if you wanna go in depth on that. But if we go back through our history to our original Z-Sphere mesh here and hold down control and tap that point in history and go all the way back to where we were, even though we've changed the vert order, even if we went in here and like use move and see how we're gonna control drag and change those verts, we've done all sorts of crazy stuff to this mesh, change the vert order. However, we stored this point in history that has this shape. We can go in here to subtool project and hit project history. Uh, and you know, you may have to play with that distance quite a lot, like really crank up that distance. In fact, you can take this projection shell and it's gonna look a lot like that thick skin preview. So now we can do project history and we'll project a little bit more. What I like to use in this case is go in here to B, 
HR, the History Recall Brush, and now we can just use our brush to brush back. It's going to tell you don't use symmetry. That's fine. Just turn off X, go through here, and now you can use a brush that's going to basically push the existing verts back to that original mesh. So don't confuse this with a morph target or original vert positions. It's basically, it has the original mesh stored in memory as kind of a collision mesh, think of it that way. And now we can push the existing verts back. So in fact, I can take this, see all these verts that are making up this horn or whatever, and I push them back to our original sphere. Those horn verts, for lack of a better term, are still there. Uh, you can see they're kind of squashed against our original sphere shape. In fact, let's go in here so you can see this a little bit better. It's a skin shader four. So that geometry is still there. Uh, but now we can kind of use a history brush to go back and kind of force those verts to conform to that original mesh. Again, it's not a morph. It's not storing vert positions and moving them back. Again, we have all new verts. We're just forcing those verts to go back to our existing mesh. Now, again, we had X symmetry turned on originally, so I can tap X to go across X symmetry again uh, and start sculpting, but History Recall doesn't like that. If we want to get our original mesh back, there's a couple different ways we could do that. We can go switch back over to our matcap gray. We can go down here to our deformation, smart resim, and we can go, I'm gonna mask over this half of our mesh, hold down, um, tap X to go out of X symmetry first. So this half of our mesh, I wanna keep, and then I can do a smart resim, and it'll kind of resim those other verts back. Or if you don't really care about this mesh, we're just gonna dynamesh it anyways. I can do a geometry, modify topology, mirror and weld across the x-axis. So if you turn on our floor here, you're gonna see this red line is the x-axis, negative and positive, z-axis, forward and back, positive is forward, negative is back, and then Y you can't see, but it's a green line that's gonna go positive Y, negative Y. So X-axis is on by default, that's across this way. Now, if I do a mirror and weld across the X, it's gonna go negative to positive, so if I do that, it's gonna take all this stuff I don't want and put it on the other side. So to undo that, go down here to deformation mirror, again, across X is by default, so I can mirror that. So now this is on the negative side, and now I can go over here Geometry Modified Topology, Mirror and Weld. If I turn on my polyframe, you're gonna see it just mirrored those verts. Now I can control drag to re-dynamesh. It's gonna re-dynamesh my mesh. Again, if you wanna know the basics of dynamesh, go back to that beginner series. I was talking about ZBrush for ideation, that'll give you all the basics of dynamesh there. But I just wanted to throw that option out there for you deep divers who made it to the end of this uh, video that went well past the original fixed skin functionality, but you might find interesting.